ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اللهم اجرنا من النار رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ثم اما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters for 30 days of the year we deprived ourselves of even the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made halal for us only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we left our desires only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we stood up we woke up in the middle of the night to pray to eat from the halal provisions and then to fast for 13, 14, 15 hours of the day consistently only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We prayed the five prayers, the taraweeh, the tahajjud. We did all of the adhkar and the duas, listened to the Quran, the verses, the ayat after ayat of the Quran. We heard many reminders and khatira and halaqat in the month of Ramadan all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us who had weaknesses in our nafs towards certain things that are haram, whether it's music or whether it's whether there are things that we should not be looking at. We even stayed away from those things for 30 days for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But every year without fail, every year, we see that as soon as the month of Ramadan finishes, on the very first night, it's not even the day of Eid yet. We're in the first night of Shawwal, right after the month of Ramadan. And we see a large portion of the Muslims, a large portion of those who say the, la, the kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We see them going back to their old ways. The very night, it's not even the day yet of, of Eid. After Maghrib on Eid, crowds upon crowds of Muslims were gathering in our own city, in the Ridgeway Plaza, for example, in the thousands, gathering together and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They weren't gathering like we, like we gathered in the Masjid for Taraweeh and Tahajjud. But this time, the very night after the month of Ramadan ended, they were gathering in mixed gatherings between the genders, dancing, playing music, smoking, showing off their cars and their wealth in a display of ostentation and arrogance with no regard for any moral decency or etiquette. We saw the pages of social media full of videos and posts of everything that was happening in this city. And wallahi, it's not about this city alone. It's not about the Ridgeway Plaza alone. Because the same thing happened in other parts of the city. The same thing happened in other parts of the country. And the same thing happened in other countries 
where the Muslims have resided, one of the most sinned upon days in the whole year are actually the first few days of the month of Shawwal. These, they're people who claim to be from among the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who cannot wait for the month of Ramadan to end so that they can greet the doors of what? The Masajid? No. So that they can greet the doors of the clubs and the places of filth on the very night. As if Ramadan basically represented the chains that kept, that held them back from the real sins that they wanted to commit. And with the end of the Ramadan, all of those chains were basically removed. SubhanAllah, what a sad parable this is. What a sad parable because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave this example for the shayateen. The shayateen are the ones who are chained in the month of Ramadan. And with the end of the month of Ramadan, the shayateen are the ones that are unchained in order to wreak havoc in the world. Is it really that, that we follow the footsteps of shaytan? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, udukhulu fi silmi kaffah, wa la tattabi'u khutuwat shaytan, innahu lakum aduhum mubin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers to enter into the fold of Islam completely, wholeheartedly. Don't face the qibla and then keep turning back around just because a month passed away. And do not follow the footsteps of the shaytan because indeed he's a clear-cut enemy to you. Why? Why is he an enemy to us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِذُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ the shaitan threatens us with poverty. It puts poverty as fear in front, in front of us, in our hearts. And he commands, subhanAllah, look at the word. وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ He commands, he enjoins fahsha, immorality. And we can see, subhanAllah, it only takes a few minutes. It only took a few minutes for the army of the shayateen to divert the Muslims. 30 days of effort gone down the drain. For many, subhanAllah, the famous scholar Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, who died 795 after Hijrah, he wrote a fantastic book called Lata'if al-Ma'arif, where he mentioned that the very essence of Eid, the very essence of the departure of Ramadan, is not the wearing of new clothes, but rather it is the increasing in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The essence of Eid is not beautifying our cars and our clothes, as he says. But rather it is the real Eid, the real celebration of the end of Ramadan is to be forgiven and pardoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, this was one of the main concerns that the earlier generations had with regards to Ramadan. Mu'alla ibn al-Fadl. He was a man who passed away in the third century after Hijrah. He mentions that the Salaf of this Ummah, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and the Atba'a al Tabi'een, the first three generations, they used to make dua for six months after the, the month of Ramadan passed away for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their deeds in the month of Ramadan that passed away. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, after the month of Ramadan, they would say to one another, whose deeds were accepted in the month of Ramadan so we can congratulate him and whose deeds were deprived in the month of Ramadan and after it so that we can console him. Subhanallah. All of the hadith that we listened to in the month of Ramadan and prior to it and after it, some of the most common hadith that we listened to, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانًا إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ All of these ahadith that we listen to, that the one who fasts in the month of Ramadan, the one who stands in salah in the month of Ramadan, the one who stands on the, on the night of Qadr in the month of Ramadan, his past sins are going to be forgiven. All of these ahadith that we listen to, with glad tidings after glad tidings for those who, pass, who those who basically 
worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the month of Ramadan. All of these glad tidings, they don't come for free. All of these glad tidings, they come with certain conditions and certain prerequisites that have to be met. All three of these narrations that I just mentioned right now, they had something in common. All of them said, Imanan, Wahtisaban, with sincere faith and with the expectation of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The inclusion of sincere faith and the expectation of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It indicates that these, there are certain signs that we, have to full, that we have to fulfill. In order for our month of Ramadan to be accepted. Such that we can be forgiven. And that's the real goal of Ramadan. So that we can come out of it clean. What are some of the conditions of an accepted Ramadan? We can summarize the, the conditions into three. The first is that the intention in the heart towards turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both fear and hope must continue after Ramadan. It cannot stop. We're not Ramadanis. We're Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَ In Surah Al-Nahl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not be like the one, the, the woman who strengthens the yarn, who spins threads and makes a nice cloth and then unties all of that after it becomes strong. The scholars, Abdullah bin Kathir, as suddi and others, they said that this ayah refers to a crazy woman who used to reside in the city of Mecca at the time of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sahaba who would knit amazing garments. And after all of the efforts to knit them, right when it was completed, she would take the string at the end and then pull it. And all of the effort is gone after that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an example of that woman and says, do not be like that. Do not be the ones who spent all of those hours worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and coming close to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then only to waste it after that. A true believer is somebody who always in their heart has progress and not regress in their hearts. Even in the biggest of calamities. The ulama mentioned that the biggest calamity that this ummah has ever faced is the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. Because this was a man, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave and conferred upon the believers a great favor by sending him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the man who purified a generation bi'idhin lay ta'ala. This was a man, Siraj and Munira, he was a shining light. He made matters clear for us bi'idhin lay ta'ala. This was a man who was a mercy to all of mankind, to all of jinn kind, to the animals, to nature, to everything. When he passed away, and this incident is, is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, when he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an stood up on the mimbar, on the mimbar in the masjid of the, of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at that time, when the ummah was in a traumatized state, he says, مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتِ Whoever worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alive and he does not die. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتِ But whoever worshipped Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has died. He's reminding the ummah, that even under the greatest calamity, let alone the passing of the Ramadan, this is the passing away of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't died. He's alive and he will always be eternally alive. Therefore our worship also needs to continue to be alive. It cannot diminish. Subhanallah, even the mere action is not enough. But rather, our dua to have it, these actions accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also needs to continue after Ramadan. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةً أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who gave what they gave with fear in their heart, 
knowing that they're going to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is this ayah talking about those who commit sins? Those who committed theft and zina and drank alcohol? The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يا بن تصديق No, O daughter of, of Abu Bakr. This ayah is referring to the ones who prayed and who fasted and who gave charity. Why? They, they still have fear in their heart because they don't know if it's, if it's accepted. They don't know if it's something that is deficient. They're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it to be accepted. And this was one of the most common du'as of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbila the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, give me knowledge that is beneficial. Give me provisions that are wholesome. And give me actions that are accepted. Even the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after all of his salah, his siyam, his da'wah, his jihad, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to accept them. Then what about us? Ibrahim alayhi salam, even before him, Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam, after they were building the foundations of the Kaaba, subhanAllah, what can be a bigger project than building the foundations of the Kaaba itself? After they had built the foundations of the Kaaba, they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta samiul alim. They're the ones who are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, accept this from us, for indeed you're all, all hearing and all knowing. The second condition of an accepted Ramadan is that our goals must be oriented towards the standards and the targets set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once our hearts have made the claim to go to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything else becomes secondary after that in priority. It is Allah who created us and therefore it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who deserves solely to tell us what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it, and with whom to do it with. Just like with Ramadan and Eid, subhanAllah, there's a lot of wisdom in just that. On the 30th day of Ramadan, it was fard upon us to fast. The very next day, it was haram for us to fast. This is Islam. This is blind submission to the one who created everything that is around us. That's the essence of Islam. From that comes justice, from that comes mercy, from that comes peace. And subhanAllah, this is something that is the condition of belief itself. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به. The Rasul said that nobody, none of you are going to believe until their desires are in line with what he brought. That's how important this is for us. And the third condition of an accepted Ramadan is persistence in action. Look at the example of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The same one that we mentioned after the death of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa He gave one of the greatest khutbas in the history of this ummah at that time in order to stabilize it. This is the same man who after in his khilafah, in his leadership of the ummah, faced one of the greatest calamities at that time where many of the tribes in Arabia apostatized for one reason or another. One of those reasons was they denied to pay the zakat to the Imam, to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. What was the statement at that time? This is the statement of principles and examples that we need to follow. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, din wa ana hay? Is our deen going to be any less when I'm alive? This is the ghira that they had for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He couldn't imagine in his mind that the deen will be belittled right after him or in his life right after the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He couldn't imagine that, he couldn't fathom that. Is the deen going to be any less when I'm alive? This is the same level of persistence we need to have to uphold the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our life. Striving, this is what we're here for. This is why we're breathing. This is why we have blood flowing in our veins. In order to put the standards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put it firmly into the ground as pillars of justice. The famous Imam, 
Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he was asked, Mata tastarih? When are you going to rest, ya Imam? This is the Imam of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The man who saved the aqeedah, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his life from being corrupted. He spent his day and night for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people started asking him, when are you going to rest, ya Imam? He said, I'm going to rest when my right foot enters paradise. His own mother asked him a similar question as well. When are you going to take a break, my son? He responded to her, Ma'al mahbarati hatta al-maqbara. With my ink pot until my grave. That's how they saw life. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُقِنُونَ One of the most important ayat in the whole of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we made them imams, leaders upon this earth. When? لَمَّا صَبَرُوا When they were persistent. وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُقِنُونَ when they, when they had certainty in the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when Allah gave them victory. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them leadership upon this earth. In summary, if you want to know if your Ramadan is accepted, we can summarize all three of these points into one. If, if your actions after the month of Ramadan are the exact same as before the month of Ramadan began, then know that there was something that was deficient. Know that something was missing. Know that there was more purification needed. There's more effort needed, more sacrifice needed, more sincerity needed. But rest assured, we're still breathing. We still have life, alhamdulillah. There's still an opportunity. Come back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come back to your true purpose. For why you were placed on this earth. And come back to the purpose why we will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد 33,482 lives. 13,000 children obliterated. 8,400 women massacred. 76,049 people injured. And 8,000 people missing. These are numbers, figures and data that needs to be etched into the hearts of every single believer who still has life in their hearts. These are figures that will be protected in the history books until the day of judgment or even after that. One of the most fearful ayat in the Quran that don't ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware of the actions of those who oppress. It is only just a temporary delay until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show them something that will cause fear in their hearts and on their faces on the day of judgment. The question to reflect upon us, for us, how many years are going to pass by? With us taking every excuse possible to divide further and further. How many years are going to go by for us to go back to our comfortable homes, to our mundane discussions, to our procrastinating mindset, to our old ways. All while seeing with our own eyes the decline of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of our eyes. And this takes me to the second point related to the month of Ramadan ending that the real challenge has yet again begun, continuing rather in the year 1445 after Hijrah. In Ramadan, we picked up the Qur'an, we listened to it and we shed tears, hearing the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
In the month of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal gave that opportunity to, to normalize the acts of righteousness in our lives. Now is the time to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how sincere were we in our du'as. How sincere were we in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it cannot come at a more pertinent time. Now is the time to actually engage with the trade of Allah, trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allahu Akbar. Listen to this ayah. Listen to the wording of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased, He has purchased from the believers their lives and their, and their wealth in exchange for paradise. And what a profitable trade that is. To trade in this temporary, perishable body, wealth that comes in and out for something that is permanent, a permanent residency in the palaces, in the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a very pivotal moment in human history. When nation after nation are descending into chaos, about to wage wars that will cause massacres potentially. We're living at a time when blood of human beings has cheapened to a level that it never has in the past. We're living in times where the hearts are so blind among humanity that we can have people pillaging and massacring during the day and then they go to sleep at night peacefully. In the midst of all of this chaos, it is high time for the Muslims to come together, to collect their resources together, and to establish a level of strength once again. And the prescription for that strength is to hold on, united upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, united upon the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal commands the believers, obey Allah and His Messenger and do not dispute with one another such that your strength and your wind, your courage departs, but rather persist, persist in the goal of unity because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who persist. Take this opportunity after Ramadan to put these subsidiary, secondary differences aside. Take this opportunity to mend the hearts with those who basically turned their backs on us before. Take the opportunity to forgive those who basically hurt us for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can come together and collect our strength once again. For the ulama and for the, for the shiyukh, for the du'at, for those who are leaders in the communities. The message is to put your enmity and your jealousy and your sense of destructive competition aside. We cannot afford to have a divided leadership in this ummah anymore. There are far too, too many differences, even to the point that the same leaders have no backbone to be able to say the truth. Why? Because a divided leadership is a weak leadership. A divided leadership is a weak leadership. For the community at large, for the awam, for you and I, let us take every opportunity to consolidate and to unify the, most, the two most powerful tools that we have in our midst. We have two very powerful tools amongst our midst. The first of those tools is competence, or rather the potential to cultivate that competence and utilize it for the great and noble goal of establishing justice upon this earth. And the second tool that we have, which is even more powerful, is a unified voice. They can ignore one, they can ignore 10, they can ignore 100, 1,000, 10,000, they can ignore. But can they ignore a billion? A billion people standing upon or under the shade of Tawheed, standing under the shade of La ilaha illallah. Can they possibly ignore that? And for those who think that this is a fantasy, no, wallahi, this is not a fantasy. Rather, this is an obligation. 
and an obligation by definition is something that is real because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not obligate something that is beyond the capacity of human beings. So let the hearts of those who have ghira for the deen left, let them wake up. Let them wake up to greater realities that are plaguing us right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ the recipe or the prescription, the equation is very simple, my brothers and sisters. Our obligation is faith. Our obligation is unity. And Allah's obligation. Allah is saying it is an obligation upon Him to aid and to give victory to the believers. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are given victory in the ummah. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us deserving of the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ansur Islam wal muslimin. Allahumma ansur Islam wal muslimin. Allahumma ansur Islam wal muslimin. Allahumma ghfil lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma aati nufusana taqwaaha وَزَكِّهَا أَنْتَ خَيْرُ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا أَنْتَ وَلِيُّهَا وَمَوْلَاهَا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ ثُمَّ صَلُّوا عَلَى خَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالْإِمَامَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله